The United States Treasury Department presents The Adventures of Two Cutest Puppies You Ever Saw. They sure are, but did you ever see a puppy that wasn't cute? I wish the shop was open so I could hold one. You've done the next best thing. You've had me standing in front of that window for the last, what, 20 minutes? Uh, yes. Clark, look. Oh, no, Lois. Do you realize this is the 18th window you stopped at? And furthermore, do you realize that according to my calculations, at this rate, it'll take me until the middle of next week to walk you home? If you're in a hurry, I'm sure I can manage alone. I'll tell you what. You look in half the windows, and I'll look in the other half. That way, it'll just take us half as long. But you don't understand. Shopping is an art. You mean you deliberately stay when you could have gotten away? Well, I, I've never done anything like this before, Superman. I, it was all like a dream until that alarm went off and woke me up. Well, I realized that I can, I can run from the police, but I can't run for myself. It's easy to see that you're new at this sort of thing. Why did you do it? Why? That's what I keep asking myself. Sure, it was the money, but it went deeper than that. I should have learned how to save and handle money a long time ago. Then this wouldn't have happened. Well, I'm sorry it did, but at least you've learned something very important. Well, pretty bad way to learn it, don't you think? Well, here they come, Superman. Yeah, I feel a little better for having someone to talk to. Thanks. It's all right, son. Now, you can do me a favor. Don't tell them I was here. Sure. Uh, never mind, Clark. I already got the story. Too bad you went running off in the wrong direction again. Well, this isn't the first time you scooped me, Lois. And I haven't finished. I got more than just the story. I got a good look at the second burglar. What? You mean the one that got away? You saw him? No. He must have gone out the back way and up the other alleys I passed. We bumped right into each other. Well, I hope you don't bump into him again. It's pretty nifty, isn't it, Mr. Kent? I can almost carry it in my pocket. And also, I have any special outside assignments. I can carry my typewriter with me. That's right, Jimmy. It looks like a good price investment to me. There it is. Eyewitness report of a burglary that didn't burgle too well. Well, congratulations, Lois. Okay, that's cute. Cute? Can't you think of some other word to call it, Miss Lane? I don't want to be known as the boy with the cute typewriter. I'm afraid it's hopeless, Jimmy. I once knew a woman who referred to the Grand Canyon as cute. Well, whatever you call it, I didn't know the chief was handing out raises. Oh, I didn't get a raise. Then I didn't know he was handing out rich uncles. In a way, I guess you could say an uncle had something to do with it. Uncle Sam. When I was in school, I used to buy treasury savings stamps every week. By the time I graduated, they turned into bonds. So you cashed in the bonds on this typewriter? Only part of them. You see, the interest I got on my investment made the bonds worth a lot more than what I put into them. Well, that's very interesting, Jimmy. And speaking of learning to save, that ties in exactly with something I heard last night. And when did you hear anything about saving last night, Mr. Kent? I was with you all the time, remember? Oh, uh, yes, Lois. Well, this must have been some other evening when you weren't with me. Uh, Jimmy, do they still have stamp day at your old alma mater? As far as I know, every Thursday. And this is Thursday, isn't it? It gives me an idea. Why not do a feature article on how the kids help themselves and Uncle Sam by buying bonds and stamps? Cheaper, I'll go along with that. Good. How about you, Lois? I'd love to, but I have a date with Inspector Henderson. I have to look through the mug books for that speedy gentleman I met in the alley last night. Well, then come on over later. P.S. number 10. Fine. Meet you there in an hour. Uh, Jim. Yes, Miss Lane? Uh, I was wondering, could I borrow your typewriter? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Good morning, boys. Good morning, Mr. Garwood. I'd uh, like you to meet Mr. Kent and Jimmy Olson from the planet. Hi, fellas. Mr. Kent, you're the friend of Superman, aren't you? Well, we do keep in pretty close contact, yes. Boy, if Superman would come over, I bet we'd really have a stamp day. Well, I can't promise you anything, but it might be arranged. The booth looks very nice, boys. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Hello? Miss Lane? 
This is Blinky. Remember me? Blinky? Oh, of course. Why, we used to go to Sunday school picnics together. Now you're thinking of the wrong Blinky. The only Sunday school picnic I ever went to was in reform school. Then they took us all out to chase butterflies. The one I chased just happened to fly into a moving box car. So what could I do? You know, Miss Lane, I chased that butterfly all the way up to San Francisco. Well, let's not compare life histories, Blinky. What do you want? Well, I'm the guy that ran into you yesterday. You know, by the jewelry store. Then you're the... The guy they're looking for. They're bound to get me, Miss Lane, so I'm going to surrender. Well, that's fine, Blinky. You're doing the right thing. But I ain't going to surrender to the police. I'm only surrendering to you personal. Me? Sure. They'll have to give me a break if I walk in with you. Look, meet me on the corner of Chestnut and uh, Warlow in exactly a half hour, but alone. But I'm not sure I'll recognize you. You recognize me all right. In a half hour. Dr. Henderson, Lois Lane. I'll be a little late for our appointment. I have a surprise to pick up for you first. Yes, Mr. Kemp, we're pretty proud of our students. Stamp Day is really their idea, you know. You mean they do the whole thing themselves? Take the orders, collect the money, and keep their own books? And believe me, it isn't easy. But it sure is a good feeling at the end of the day when everything comes out all right. When it comes to buying saving stamps, Jimmy, I'm afraid everything's bound to come out all right. They'll start taking orders at lunch period. Now, that's an hour and a half from now. Mr. Kent, if you could get word to Superman... Well, Mr. Garwood, I'll do the best I can, but right now I'm very worried about Lois. She should have been here by now. May I use your phone? Certainly. Thanks. White's office, please. White speaking. Chief, this is Kent. What's happened to Lois? Kent, I spend half my life attempting to keep track of you, Lois, or young Olson. I spend the other half regretting that I spent the first half trying to keep track of you. I'm afraid you lost me on that last curve. When did she leave? About an hour ago. She stuck her head in the door and said, Chief, I have a date with a heisman to wrap him up and put him on ice. As usual, it didn't make much sense. I'm afraid it makes too much sense, Chief. I'll be right over. I'm sorry, I have to go. You stay here. But, but, Mr. No, but the blood, Olson. You stick around. The things I can walk into with my eyes wide open. It ain't your fault, Miss Lane. I ain't got nothing against you personal, except you can put the finger on me. So can Jeff Dunlap, your partner in crime. Nah, Jeff was in on the job. His testimony don't mean a thing. And what's going to happen to me? I gotta get rid of you, Miss Lane. But not until I get a call from the guy that's selling the jewelry for me. And in the meantime, if uh, anybody catches up with you, you use me as a shield, right? That's what I like, a girl with brains. If that's what you like, find another girl. I obviously don't have any brains or I wouldn't be here. Hey, I got an idea. Look, I'm going to be out of the country a long time, right? Well, I got to keep in touch with my pals by writing letters, right? And being as how nobody can read my handwriting, you can teach me how to run this little gadget. How about it? Sure, why not? But who's going to teach those friends of yours how to read? What a sense of humor. Nothing but laughs right up to the end. Thanks for reminding me. Well, start with lesson one. Gee, that's beautiful, Miss Lane. Every time I think of this line, I'll think of you. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's all I know, Kent. She phoned Henderson and said she'd be late. She hasn't shown up. Well, it's a safe guess that whoever she saw last night has lured into some kind of a trap. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't help us locate the trap. And there's only one lead I can think of. I'm going down to the jail and talk to Jeff Dunlop. Oh, Kent. Yes, sir. I didn't really mean all those things I said. I know you didn't, Chief. Say, 
I'm doing pretty good on this one, Miss Lane. Out of 100 letters, I only made 95 mistakes. You're doing fine, Blinky. You'll make some woman a wonderful secretary. Hey, what's that you're doing? I was just going to show you how to draw pictures with a typewriter. No, ain't that something? No. If you look too close, it doesn't look like a picture anymore. You have to look far away, and then the letters sort of blur together. Um, why don't you try one? Sure. Don't go no further. I like you real close. I was just going to test flight my airplane. You can test flight it from right over there. Anything you say, Blinky. Now look what I did. So you can make another one. Oh, thanks, Blinky. I don't feel much like playing games. Especially when you should be getting that phone call soon. to get excited about, Chief. I talked to Jess, all right. And he identified the other fellow, but he doesn't know where he lives. Well, now, don't worry about me. I haven't suddenly gone childish. But take a look at this. Hmm. Daily plan and urgent. Someone found it on the street and brought it in. Take a look inside. Well, if that somebody thinks this is any time for practical jokes. Wait a minute, Chief. Just a second. Look here among the exits. Prisoner, top floor, 18 Cedar Street. Can't that fit? Well, if it is, I hope we're in time. Get me the police. I better get over there, Chief. I might be able to be of some help. Yeah. Yeah? Good. That's the call I've been waiting for, Miss Lane. Everything's been taken care of, except you. Blanky, you don't. You just get a few years for that jewel robbery. But for this... That's the chance I gotta take. No, I don't believe it. You will, Blanky, you will. Your ammunition, Blinky. Sit down. Hey, let me out. Let me out. Another few seconds, and it would have been too late, Superman. Well, it wasn't, Miss Lay, and that's what counts. What time is it? Just about 12.30. Well, I can't wait for the police. I have an appointment date. Excuse me. Well, you won't have to worry about riding your pals now, Blinky. Hiya, boys and gals. There can only be one Superman. Of course. Did you ever think about some of the super things that you can do for yourself? Well, like saving up the money for your own vacation. Or uh, for that new bike that you wanted so much. Well, all you have to do is just put away part of your allowance or your odd job money and put it in United States saving stamps at school. Those dimes, quarters, and dollars add up mighty fast, especially when you buy them every week on stamp day. Well, the first thing you know, you'll have enough for a savings bond. Just like Dad buys for the payroll savings at work. And from then on, the sky's the limit. Take it from Superman. Your mom and dad will be plenty proud of you if you're learning to save regularly. And the teachers are on your team, too. They make sure of having savings stamps at school for you to buy and remind you when it is stamp day. And so, boys and girls, be super citizens and have a super future by saving regularly with United States savings stamps at school. And keep on making me and everyone else as proud of you as we are today. Bye now. Lloyd.
Lois. It's good to see you again. All in the day's work, Clark. While you were out covering stamp things, Superman and I were cleaning up a case. It looks like Blinky's going to get jailed. Jess is going to get probation. And I'm going to get my typewriter back. <laughs> Golly, Jim, it's a lucky thing for me you saved your money for that typewriter. Otherwise, I'd never gotten that note out. It turned into a happy ending for everybody. And just to make the ending a little more happy, I have a present for each of us. Cheaper stamp albums. Thank you, Mr. Kent. You have an extra one. Who's that for? Oh, just for a friend of mine. <laughs>